guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I have a giant, it's a book haul. This is the, um, from Ollie's. <laughs> we went to Ollie's. Ooh. So we went to Ollie's, if y'all haven't been. It's a grocery outlet, but they also have, like, books and stuff, too. So, we'll be coming back later on because I do have three books coming today from Amazon. I don't know when it's going to come. It's early in the morning right now, so <laughs> who knows when it's going to come. But I thought I would go ahead and do my little Ollie's book haul. First thing I got was these two books, which it says somewhere. It's the second and the third. And this one says second. And this one says third. Okay. So I got this one, Girl Online on tour, just because it sounded good. It says, I lean into his chest and feel his heart beating. I can't help but think this is way better than Skype. I stare up at his chiseled jaw, messy dark hair, and deep brown eyes. How did I get so lucky? I'm normally the unlucky girl who's always caught in the rain without an umbrella, who never has her numbers drawn in the school raffle, who always loses at Monopoly. Maybe life has been storing up all my wins just for this so I can be with Noah. So I don't have the first, they didn't have the first one in the series, but this is the second one and the third one. But it was only, look at that, $2.99 from Ollie's. That's why I got it. So I was like, I can probably pick up, I can either rent, I look, I haven't looked and seen if they have it in my library, but so if they have it in my library, I can always get the first book from my library or I can look for it online. I'm sure I can find the first girl online book online. But I got this one. And for $2.99. Although that's a pretty good price. And it is a YA novel. Oh, there's a synopsis inside. It says, Penny's bags are packed. When Noah invites Penny on his European music tour, she can't wait to spend time with her rock godtastic boyfriend. <laughs> but between Noah's jam-packed schedule, less than welcoming bandmates, and threatening messages from jealous fans, Penny wonders whether she's really cut out for life on tour. She can't help but miss her family, her best friend Elliot, and her blog, Girl Online. Can Penny learn to balance life and love on the road, or will she lose everything in pursuit of the perfect summer? So, it sounded like a good book that I thought I would like. So, I picked up that one. The next one is Girl Online Going Solo. Is this a little um, spoilery? This was also $2.99. That's why I picked And it sounded good. So on the back of here, it reads, Every time I walk around the corner, there's another reminder of him. Even though I'm sure he must be far away from where I am, I keep thinking I see him in a crowd of people just ahead of me. Am I going crazy? You know that saying that goosebumps happen when someone walks over your grave? That's the same feeling I get. Shivery, cold, and a little bit scared. And it always makes me feel a bit pathetic. What can I do to drive the ghost away and feel normal again? So this one sounds good. So they sound pretty good. I cannot wait to read them. I'm going to have to go get the first book before I read these ones. But two ninety nine, dollars I couldn't pack that up. And they sounded like a cute, a cute little YA read. Going with YA reads, here's another one that was only two ninety nine, And this one is Tales from the Haunted Mansion, Volume 2, Midnight at Madame Leota's. So... I love Disney and the Haunted Mansion, so I cannot pass this up. This is probably more of a children's book. I mean, look at the inside. It has pictures and everything. So this is probably going to take me maybe one day to read. But look at that. How cool is this? <laughs> Anyways, it's a very short book. This is funny. On the back of it, at the end of it, it says, Dead End, Prepare to Enter the Mortal World. The, the Living World. <laughs> cute but here on the back it says welcome foolish mortals to the lonesome library of the haunted mansion and this frightfully friend fiendish book return to the happiest haunt on earth for more tales from beyond the grave but take caution for when the clock strikes 12 the most mysterious medium of all will establish 
contact with the other side and the ghastly ghosts will materialize. So read on if you dare, but beware of Midnight and Madame Leotis. <laughs> so I'm going to have to look for volume one. This was only two ninety nine dollars too, and there was only one copy left of this at Ollie's. So yes, I end up picking it up. Now I'm going to look for volume one because I think even though this probably won't take me too long to read, because this is very very YA. I feel like this is almost something I would have read in middle school. <laughs> giving Goosebumps vibes, but Disney Haunted Mansion. <laughs> the next book I picked up, which sounded good, this one was $5, which was kind of expensive for how little the book is, but it's called 37 Seconds. It says, Dying Revealed Heaven's Help. And here on it says, the, on the front of it, it says, The day my son was born, I died. I had premonitions it was going to happen, but no one believed me. Even more unbelievable is what I would see when I flatlined for 37 seconds. So that sounds so good. I thought, oh, I would like to read this. Um, it's just a short book too, so I'm sure it'll probably take me maybe a day to read because it's very tiny, but I thought I would love to read this person's. So I'm, I have a feeling she's going to, since she's talking about she died for 37 seconds, I have a feeling she's going to have some recount of maybe heaven when she died, giving birth to her son. So I'm very interested. Even though it was $5, that really got me into it because I was like, ooh, that sounds really interesting. The next thing I got... It was three ninety nine, and this is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. It says three ninety nine up here. So this one says, and I've heard talk about this, so I knew I would probably like it. It's a good floppy book. <laughs> Lu Louisa Clark is an ordinary girl living an exceedingly ordinary life. Steady boyfriend, close family who has barely been farther afield than her tiny village she takes a badly needed job working for her ex-master of the universe will trainer who is wheelchair bound after an accident will has always lived a huge life big deals extreme sports worldwide travel and he's not interested in exploring a new one will is acerbic moody bossy but lou refuses to treat him with kid gloves and soon his happiness means more to her than she expected when she learns that will has shocking plans of his own lou sets out to show him that life is still worth living me before you brings the life of two people who couldn't have less in common a heartbreakingly romantic novel that asks what do you do when making the person you love happy also means breaking your own heart so Sounds pretty good. Louisa Clark. Sound like a good book, so. And I know some people, it's been raved about this book has been. So I cannot wait to read it. So this one's also added to my, my book list. Um, I got one more book. And I got, it was only $3.99. I got Rebecca from there. It's a... Uh, Classic tale of romantic suspense says it's a Netflix film, which I didn't realize. <clears throat> it says, Last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again. With these words, the reader is ushered into an isolated greystone mansion on the windswept Cornish coast. As the second Mrs. Maxim de Winter recalls the chilling events that transpired as she began her new life as the young bride of a husband she barely knew. For in every corner of every room were phantoms of a time dead but not forgotten. A past devoted, preserved, devotedly preserved by the sinister housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers. A sweet, immaculate, and untouched clothing laid out and ready to be worn, but not by any of the great house's current occupants. With an eerie precedent of evil tightening her heart, the second Mrs. De Winter walked in the shadow of her mysterious predecessor, determined to uncover the dark secrets and shattering truths about Maxim's first wife, the late and hauntingly beautiful Rebecca. This special edition of Rebecca includes excerpts from Daphne Demure's The Rebecca Notebook and other memoirs and essay on the real Manderley Demure's original epilogue to the book and more. So this sounds pretty good. The writing is pretty interesting looking. <laughs> so I thought this would be a great one to read during... 
Halloween. Because it seems spooky. So I'm excited to read this. It was only $3.99, so I didn't think that was bad. Okay, the next book I'm going to show you is not from Ollie's. That was the last book that I got at Ollie's. So I got a pretty good amount of books from Ollie's. That's when I pre-ordered to get the... I pre-ordered from Amazon so I could get the um, soft, the paperback, but not the hardback. And that is Postcards from Summer. I've seen this in one of the blogs. Book, book you, booktubers that I watched was talking about this one. And I just found it so cute. I had to go. It's a thick one. It's a thick book. It's got almost 600 pages. It's pretty tiny writing. Look how tiny that writing is. <laughs> so, it just sounded interesting. It says, 17-year-old Lexi has always wanted to know more about her mother, who passed away when Lexi was only a child. But her dad will barely talk to her. He says he'd rather live in the present with Lexi, her stepmom, and her half-brother. Lexi loves her family, too. But is it so wrong to want to learn about the mom she never got to know? When Lexi's grandma dies and leaves her a worn blue chest that belonged to Lexi's mother, Lexi is ecstatic to find a treasure trove of keepsakes. Her mom held on to letters, pamphlets, flyers, and news articles, all from the same beautiful summertime getaway. Mackinac Island, plus a cryptic postcard that hints at a forbidden romance. If Lexi wants answers, the island is where she needs to go. Without telling her dad, Lexi goes to the gorgeous Mackinac Island in Lake Huron, reachable only by ferry. Cars are forbidden and bikes are the number one mode of transportation along the quaint cobblestone streets and around the majestic hotel that looms like a high castle over charming cafes and bookshops following her mother's footsteps. Lexi befriends an elderly former Broadway star and a charming young hotel worker while quietly falling in love with her surroundings. But though the island may be beautiful, it's hiding, un it's hiding unfortunate secrets, some with her mother at the center. Could some questions be left buried beneath the blue waters? So that sounds pretty good. <laughs> She's going to find out some things about her mom that maybe she doesn't want to know. I don't know. But it also kind of sounds like another book that I read. Because there's another book I read where they went to the island. But there was another book I read where they went to an island. And there was like no cars allowed, only bikes. I don't remember what book it was now. But it kind of had this, it didn't have the same. It was more of a love story where this one's more about finding out about her mom. It's just a such cute little book. Sounded really good. It's by Cynthia Platt. But yeah, maybe there's going to be a love story in between. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but yeah, so far, that's all I have for you. I'm going to go ahead and cut out now. And I'll be back in a little bit whenever my Amazon order arrives. Because there's going to be three more books that I'm going to show you from that Amazon order. And then that'll be the end of this book haul video. So I'm going to go ahead and go now. And I'll be back once my Amazon order has arrived. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Told you I would be back as soon as the Amazon package came. And I am. So here's the three books I got this week. One of them is all tore up. <sighs> I'm so upset. I hate it, but first book I got was Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. And just look at it. It's like tore up right here. You can tell looking at the page how mangled it is. Like, the spine is tore up. This is been through some trauma they didn't even, it was like in a bag it wasn't even in a box but this sounded so good so at the top of it it says a wedding planner and her grumpy ex must work together to plan a celebrity event in this deliciously spicy and funny novel from fanfic sensation julie soto and just look at the cover i was just i love the cover of the two characters he just looks so brooding and emo and who doesn't, who doesn't love a brooding man? I know, right? Tattoos. 
It's got all the things. <laughs> but here on the back it says, Ama Torres is a wedding planner who doesn't believe in marriage. But weddings, they're amazing. Elliot Bloom is a brooding florist who hates owning a flower shop until a certain bright-eyed, donut-loving workaholic shows up at his door. Once upon a time, they collaborated on events by day and by night. Alma traced the intricate flower tattoos etched along his body. Then Alma shattered his heart and never spoke to Elliot again. Now they're working on an event that can make or break both of their careers, except neither of them has gotten over what happened two years ago. Things are not helped by the two brides who see the obvious chemistry between Alma and Elliot and are determined to set them up, not knowing their complicated history. But as the wedding takes on a life of its own, Alma and Elliot are about to discover that some things can survive a complete catastrophe. Smart and hilarious forget-me-not is about two people giving themselves and love a second chance. So it's a second chance romance. I love a second chance romance. And this one just looks so good. I'm still really upset about this book. I wonder if I shove it in between some heavy books and smash it if it'll fix this little crease here. Maybe. <laughs> But I just love the the cover is so beautiful to me. With the purple flowers and then the picture of them two. I really like it. So that was one of the ones I got. The next one I got is one that I've actually already read. But I felt like I needed to get it because <laughs> I accidentally pre-ordered the third book in the series. I got um, The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. Walter. I think this is the debut novel from them. And it was so good. This was my one of my number one summer reads. One of them. There was another one that I really liked too. That was with the summer camp. But this was like the first summer read I had of this summer. That I really really loved. And it was just so good. And if you haven't read it. I recommend reading this book. I can read it. So here it says. It's all fun and games until someone loses their heart. When Meredith Fox lost her sister Claire 18 months ago, she shut everyone out. But this summer, she's determined to join the world again. The annual family vacation to Martha's Vineyard seems like the perfect place to reconnect. Her entire extended family is gathering for a big summer wedding. And although Meredith is dateless, after being unexpectedly dumped, she's excited to participate in the traditional Fox family game of Assassin that will take place during the week of wedding festivities. Claire always loved the game, and Meredith is determined to honor her legacy. But when Meredith forms an alliance with a cute groomsman, she finds herself getting distracted. Meredith tries to focus on the game and win it for her sister, but she can't help falling for him. And as the week progresses, she realizes she's not only at risk of losing the game, but also her heart. And this was so good. This was a five-star read for me for the summer. I really, really love this book. But yeah, and it's like a perfect floppy. <laughs> if you like your your books floppy, that was a good floppy one. And the last book I got, it's by the same author. It's the second one in it. And this one is What Happens After Midnight. It's like kind of in the same vein here. I don't think it's like a sequel or a series or whatever. <laughs> but um says this the game is almost afoot will you join my band of fools is this email the jester x x i i i at gmail.com with your answer <laughs> it says lily hopper has two more weeks until she's officially finished with boarding school with graduation quickly approaching lily is worried that she somehow missed out on the fun of being in high school so when she receives a mysterious note inviting her to join the anonymous senior class jester and executing the end of your prank, Lily sees her chance to put her goody two-shoes reputation behind her. When Lily realizes the jester is none other than Taggart Swell, her ex-boyfriend, she's already in too deep to back out and it's going to be a problem. Lily might have dumped Tag, but she still has major feelings. Plus his brilliant plan to steal the school's yearbooks targets none other than Lily's prom date and senior class president, Daniel. 
as the group of pranksters hide cryptic clues across campus for Daniel to find, Lily and Tag find themselves in close quarters. As the exes dodge campus safety guards, night owl teachers, a troop of freshmen, and even Daniel himself, new sparks fly between them. But old hurts and painful secrets refuse to be ignored. And with graduation on the horizon, sometimes it takes letting go to realize that some bonds can't be broken. So that sounds really good. <clears throat> and, um, sounds like it's going to be sort of like a really cute one, like the Summer of Broken Rules. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited to read this one too. And I have, there's a third one. And the cover is The Epitome of Fall. I've already pre-ordered it. <laughs> the um, paperback version of it. And it, it's like orange and yellow and all the colors of fall. And it comes out in the fall. And it comes out in September, I think is when it said it came out. So I already pre-ordered the third book in the series. And it's going to come whenever, whenever it comes out. <laughs> so here are all the books <laughs> that I've... Ah! Knocking things over. So those were all the books that I have hauled this time. So, psych! <laughs> I'm back again. <laughs> Here I am interrupting again when you thought you were going to be, I was going to be ending out the video. No, no, no. I end up buying more, even more books. I know. Who I am I? So my husband, my husband ended up taking me to this used bookstore over the weekend called uh, Second and Charles. I don't know if y'all have heard of it. I don't know if it's like everywhere, but he took me there and it's like a secondhand bookstore. It's huge huge though there's so many books they even have like a section for rare books it, it was so cool <laughs> i really liked it and i got some books while i was there so i thought i'd share them with you the first one i end up picking up is all the bright places and this one i got because it was only 3.97 it had a reduced price on it and it says it's now a netflix film which it just sounded good. It says, and on the back it says, it's the next Your Fault in Our Stars. And I love The Fault in Our Stars. That was such a good movie. And here it says, Theodore Finch spends each day thinking of ways he might die. But every day he also searches for and manages to find something to keep him here and alive and awake. Violet Markey lives for the future, counting the days until graduation. When she can escape her small Indiana town and her aching grief in the wake of her sister's death. When Finch and Violet meet on a ledge of the bell tower at school, it's unclear who saves whom. Soon it's only with Violet that Finch can be himself. And it's only with Finch that Violet learns to start living. But as Violet's world grows, Finch's begins to shrink. A heart-wrenching, unflinching story of two teens who find each other while standing on the edge. So I thought that sounds good. And I'll probably, if this is good, read the, watch the movie afterwards. Because <laughs> for some reason I love reading the book and then seeing the movie to see how much they follow the book. <laughs> I like seeing how much it follows the book or not. So, these next two books I'm going to show you, I actually, actually, actually end up getting them from Amazon. So they did have this one, Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. They did have this at Second and Charles, but it was still like ten ninety nine. It wasn't really, it was like a regular price book. And when I looked on Amazon, it was like $8 on Amazon. So I ended up picking it up on Amazon to get. And I ended up seeing they had a second one. So I got Daughter of the Siren Queen too. And there's gonna be a third one and I already pre-ordered it. So hopefully I like these. It sounds pretty good. And look at that. How beautiful is that inside the book? I love that. Anyways, this is like a pirate fantasy a love story. <laughs> it says, there will be plenty of time for me to beat him. Scoundly once I've gotten what I came for. Sent on a mission to retrieve an ancient hidden map. The key to a legendary treasure trove. 17-year-old pirate captain Alosa deliberately allows herself to be captured by her enemies giving her the perfect opportunity to search their ship. More than a match for the ruthless pirate crew, Alosa has only one thing standing between her and the map, her captor. 
the unexpectedly clever and unfairly attractive first mate, Raiden. But do not worry, for Alosa has a few tricks up her sleeve, and no lone pirate can stop the dire daughter of the pirate king. So this sounds so good. <laughs> and on the back here, an author says it's definitely for fans of Pirates of the Caribbean. Fierce heroines, slow-burning romances, and... Um, and adventures that can turn sour in the space of a gasp. Not for fans of complacent heroines, soothing plots, or those who don't speak sarcasm. So that sounds good. It sounded really good. And I really wanted it. And I'm not going to read the back of the second one because that'll probably spoil what could happen in the first one. And I don't want to spoil it. So I did pick those up on Amazon because... I seen they were cheaper on Amazon than they were in that bookstore. So that was the only exception to what I bought there. Now back to what I bought there. <laughs> the next thing I end up picking up there is uh, The Spanish Love Deception by Alina Armas. I picked this up because I know it's one of um, Sarah Ray Vargas' favorite books. And it was only $4.95 there. $4.95. When it's normally seventeen ninety nine, so that's why I picked this one up. <clears throat> it says Catalina Martin desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding, especially since her little white lie about her American boyfriend has spiraled out of control. Not everyone she knows, including her ex and his fiance, will be there and eager to meet him. She has only four weeks to find someone willing to cross the Atlantic and aid in her deception. New York to Spain is no short flight. And her Rosh's family won't be easy to fool. Enter Aaron Blackford, her tall, handsome, condescending colleague, who surprisingly offers to step in. She rather refuse. Never has there been a more aggravating, blood boiling, and insufferable man. But Catalina is desperate, and as the wedding draws nearer, Aaron looks like her best option, and she begins to realize he might not be as terrible in the real world as he is in the office. <laughs> On the on the top here, it says, a wedding in Spain, an infuriating man, three days to convince her family that she's actually in love. So, that sounds really good. <laughs> I can't wait to read this. I need to stop. Um, It's a pretty long one, 400 and some pages. I need to stop. I need to stop Um, getting library books, though. Because the whole reason I'm not reading when I'm buying is because I'm checking books out of the library. And I only have so long with those books before <laughs> I have to turn them back in. So I'm choosing to read my library books over the books that I'm buying here lately. Next thing I end up getting, I don't think this was on sale. It was just the regular price. But I got it anyways because I thought it wasn't that bad of a price. So I got this is uh, Love and Other Detours. And it comes with Love and Gelato and Love and Luck. Look, this is a beast of a boy. <laughs> I'm sure it won't take that long to get through it because it was 600 some pages. But it's, it's like a big writing in there. But it just sounded so good. It says, from Italy to Ireland, love can be found anywhere. Travel to beautiful Tuscany with Linda, who's still grieving her mother's death. Is forced to spend time with a father she never knew. But Linda, it, Lena, it's L-I-N-A. Maybe Lena isn't in the mood for a it for Italy's fairy tale landscape. All Lena wants to do is go back home until she's given a journal that her mom had kept when she lived in Italy. Suddenly, Lena is uncovering a world of magic and romance. It's a world that inspires her, along with the ever so charming Ren, to keep to follow in her mother's footsteps and uncover the secret that has been kept for far too long, a secret that will change everything. Lena thought to be true. Here's the second one, I guess, in the Green Hills of Ireland. It doesn't sound like it's going to spoil anything, so we'll see. In the Green Hills of Ireland, this one is love and luck. <laughs> Lena's best friend, Addie, is just trying to make it through her aunt's wedding, hoping that she can stop thinking about the one thing she did after the one thing she did that left her miserable and heartbroken, something her brother Ian isn't about to let her forget. 
But when Addie discovers an unusual guidebook, Ireland for the Heartbroken, she finds herself on a whirlwind tour of the Emerald Isle with Ian and his Irish friend Rowan. And as the trio journeys through magical forests and past countless castles, Addie ho hopes her guidebook will heal not only her broken heart, but also her shattered relationship with her brother. No matter where Lena's and Addie's travels um, take them, one thing is true. Romance advent and adventure are on the horizon. So that sounds really good. And I just love the cover. I think it's such a cute cover. And I end up getting one last book. The Love and Olives. This is the last book in the series. And I paid the regular price for this too. It was $12.99 for Love and Other Detours and $12.99 for this. Uh, $12.99 was pretty good for Love and Other Detours because it comes with both the books. Um, but this was kind of expensive for this one. And I kind of wish I would have just bought it on Amazon because you can get the uh, three, all three of the books and like a book set on Amazon for like $23. So I spent more money buying it at the store than I did at, um, when I could have bought it on Amazon. But And these are, they're like companion novels. I think they're all standalones because they're all about somebody different. And this one is Santorini. It says, Santorini felt like an island holding its breath as if it were keeping a secret. Live a Var Varonicus. <laughs> I had to think. <laughs> I think it's Veronica's. Liv Veronica's doesn't like to think about her father much, which makes sense. He fled to Greece when she was only eight, leaving her with just a few painful memories of their shared love for the lost city of Atlantis. So when teenage Liv suddenly receives a postcard from her father who asks if she will fly out to Greece to help him with a documentary about his theories on Atlantis, Liv is less than thrilled. When she arrives in gorgeous Santorini, Things are just as awkward as she imagined. There are so many questions, so many emotions that flood to the surface after seeing her father for the first time in years. Liv doesn't want to get sucked back into her father's world. She also definitely doesn't want Theo, her father's charismatic so-called protege, to witness her struggle. Even so, she can't help but be charmed by everything Santorini has to offer. The beautiful sunsets, the turquoise water, the sun-drenched villages, and the delicious cuisine. But not everything on the Greek island is as perfect as it seems, because as Liv slowly begins to discover, her father may not have intended her Greece, may not have, her father may not have invited her to Greece for Atlantis, but for something much more important. So this sounds so good. It looks like a chunky boy too. 506 pages. And then there's like an insert for love and love and luck and love and gelato but i like this it's kind of like all in the same i guess travel they're european travels but they're different stories from different perspectives different people i'm excited to read them they're definitely um ys because i would, at least i'm assuming they're ys because all of these seem to be like teenagers in the books but um i love it because it's going to all, they're traveling to all these places that I want to go. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Ireland. I want to go to Greece and Germany. I would love to travel to all those places, mainly because I'm partly Irish, I'm part Irish, part German. So <laughs> I would love to at least go to Germany and Ireland just to see part of, part of my heritage. But um, I've always wanted to go to Italy and Greece. <laughs> And here it talks about Santorini and it makes me think of um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Elena was from Santorini, Greece. So that is all the books. I, I'm, I swear I'm not coming back here to cut in anymore. I'm going to go ahead and send you back to Betsy of the Past for real this time. It's not a joke. <laughs> and I'll, I'll see you guys if there's ever another haul. Psych, I told you I was sending you back to Betsy of the past. This is Betsy of the future once again because I'm um, sitting here editing this vlog right now. As you can see, <laughs> I'm editing this book haul. I don't know why it's a vlog. I'm editing this book haul right now, as you can see, and it's a long one. It's already 35 minutes and 49 seconds. So I hope you grabbed a snack and a drink at the beginning of this video because... This one's going to be a little bit of a long one. And I did get one more book. 
and it was on sale. I got it from Barnes and Nobles. People have been talking about this fantasy series, and it's been like hit or miss with people. Belladonna, and I got it from Barnes and Nobles because they had an exclusive edition that has the sprayed edges, and it's a paperback. I wish they did all paperbacks like that instead of it just being hardbacks that they did sprayed edges on. How beautiful is this cover? Something about the flowers. And, oh, just so beautiful. So I'm waiting for the second one. There's a second one called Foxglove in the series. And I'm waiting for that one to come out in paperback. It's only in hardback right now. So I'm wondering if it comes out in paperback at Barnes & Noble. If it'll have the sprayed edges like this. They do have our Barnes & Noble exclusive of the second one in hardback. But... I really love pa paperback is my favorite when it comes to books. So I want to read you the back of this and then I will send you back to Betsy of the past. And that will for real be <laughs> not like the last time. It, this will for real be the end of the video because I actually am editing it right now. Hoping to post it today, which is um, August 31st. It's the last day of August and tomorrow will be the first day of September and I'll I'm so happy. <laughs> September 1st is for real, for real, the first day of fall. September, I always consider the months that end in burr to be the fall months. Because, you know, burr, it's cold. <laughs> but anyways, the, on the back of this book, it says, For as long as Signa Faro has been alive, the people in her life have fallen like stars. So, orphaned as a baby, 19-year-old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well-being, and each has met an untimely end. Her remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at the Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties while his son grapples for control of the family's waning reputation and his daughter suffers from a mysterious illness but when their mother's restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned Signa realizes that the family she depends on could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly a stable boy to hunt down the killer however Signa's best chance of uncovering the murder is an alliance with death himself a fascinating dangerous shadow who has never been far from her side. Though he's made her life a living hell, death shows Signa that their growing connection may be more powerful and more irresistible than she ever dared imagine. This is from New York Times bestselling author Adeline Grace. Belladonna brings to life a highly romantic, gothic-infused world of wealth, desire, and betrayal. How cute does this sound for a fall time fantasy read? Yes, <laughs> I'm so excited. I have so many books that I still need to read from the library. I cannot stop putting library books on hold. And I, I need to just so I can read some of my books because I have some really cute fall books that are going to be so good for fall reading. Maybe I can try and incorporate one a week from my own books into the library books I have for my weekly reading vlogs but this sounds so good and I cannot wait to read it I'm curious what I'm going to think because I know to have a few people that I've watched that I watch on uh, YouTube has read this book and it's kind of been hit or miss some people have liked it some people just said it was okay so I'm very excited and I think it's just the most beautiful cover Ugh. I, I love the cover. So, that is all. That is the end of my book haul for this week. I'm going to send you, for real, for real, for real, back to Betsy of the past. Bye. And, you know, I filmed this haul now, and I realized, because I was editing my other haul <laughs> yesterday, and I realized that I said I wasn't going to be having a haul for a while after that video, because I wanted to read all those books <laughs> before buying more. And here I am buying more. We're <laughs> not even reading a single book. <laughs> it's on my shelf. Uh, that's that is life, isn't it? But <laughs> anyways, I hope you guys, you have to let me know if you've read any of these books that I'm hauling and what you think of them. 
um, in the comments down below. I hope you guys really enjoyed this little haul that I have here. Um, you have to let me know in the comments too, any books that you've hauled recently. Just so I can have some more recommendations <laughs> to buy more books. No, so I can have more recommendations. A lot of these books that I bought do not, they're not on my libraries. They're not on my library's website. So that's the reason why I bought some of these because my library doesn't have them. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you're not yet subscribed, I would greatly appreciate it. If you consider subscribing to my channel and next to the subscribe button is the bell. You can ring that to be notified of all my future uploads. And I hope you guys are having a great day, night, weekend, whenever it is you're watching this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.